Hey guys, Crusher045 here again. Super excited about this next one. This is going to be one of the more interesting ones in the series because we're actually looking at an election today. The very first thing I wanted to do is open up our general information screen again because I want to show uh, that we need to pick a caucus for what kind of Democrat we are. I'm going to wait to do this until we actually run, but essentially you can pick between these three, and they have different p party positions. The idea being that if I were to be a progressive, I'm going to be very liberal, and I'm going to hold liberal positions. This means that the more I please this caucus, the more money they'll give me, and, and this is very realistic in that way. Uh, it even re reads it up here if you'd like to read what, what this is about. But essentially, because I think we're in a state like Kansas, we should be very, very careful about being progressive. Moderate Democrat, we as most liberal I think we could be. I think socially conservative Democrats would make sense. But I think we'll start with moderate. And if we have to change it, then we, we change it when we start running for an election. So we're going to hop over here to the office tab. We're going to go to jobs. Now, I was thinking about what job I wanted to start us with in this particular game. I was originally thinking, let's do, it, let's do city council. However, then I realized something, which is that if I want to show the entire game as best as I possibly can, the best job to do this is school board. Why? Because city council and mayor essentially are tied together. If you are a city council member, you're proposing legislation that affects the city. And if you're mayor, you're signing in legislation that affects the city. And so because both of these are city related, they're going to be very repetitive. And so I don't want to do city council and then mayor. I'd rather do school board, which focuses solely on school policy, which is something that city council and mayor cannot do. It will give me a chance to showcase more of the game. So we're going to do that. We're going to run for school board. Now, the moment I click apply, the first thing it makes me pay, do is pick a campaign manager. This person is someone that we're going to have running our campaign. We'll go ahead and pick Sean Allison. I don't think it really makes that big of a difference. It's just who do you want to be the face of your campaign? Here he is reading us about it. We have a primary election and we have a uh, general election. This is what an election screen looks like. Uh, now that we're in a campaign, these tabs all mean a whole lot more than they used to. There's no longer a blank screen here. Now we actually see the campaign screen. What's interesting about this is because we're running for school board, the only policy position that matters at all is education. So if we'll hop into the school policies here, this is the education policies. Now, we have the choice of deciding, do we support raising the, you know, do we support giving government aid to the poor to help them? Obviously we do. We're going to say more good. Do we support free community college? I think so. Free preschool, that sounds good. Increasing the salary sounds good. Um, we should oppose school choice because we are Democrats. But I want to show you something. Let's take a look for the best. 67%. If I change this to oppose, we're down. We're still at 67. So that means that it's not really that big of a deal. And it does say no effect. If I support tuition, you can see that doesn't go anywhere either. Because it's city, citywide, I just realized, not statewide. Um, so essentially, if I say I oppose raising the salary, it goes down to 64. If I say I support, it stays at 67. This is how you effectively manage your campaign to make sure that your policies match the voters. So if I want to make sure that we match the voters, if I say oppose, it goes down. We're going to want to support. And stay in what we have. Because 67% is a very good percentage. This means that roughly two-thirds of the entire population of my school district supports us. That's great. Voter enthusiasm is actually very, very, very closely tied to your approval rating. As you can see, the numbers are the exact same. This means if you have good approval rating running into an, an election, your voter enthusiasm will be very, very high among the people that you're high again with. And the reason that's the case is because this is how the game tries to keep in, 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 like popular people in office. Because voter enthusiasm determines how people will come to vote for you or if they'll support you from other parties and other positions. Now, looking at our metrics for population in the city, we have the advantage, but there's still a huge chunk of independence that can take this from us. We don't want that to happen. We want to make sure we run. So we'll go back to the campaign tab, and we're going to run for office here. The first thing I'm going to do too is make sure we look at what our volunteers are doing. I think this is fine. We don't really need yard signs. 
Policies were already done. Staff is fine. We're not going to be able to train anything because financially we don't have any money at all. So the first thing we need to do is door knock. I'll say for half of our time, you can see it raises enthusiasm. Tells people People tell us what they like. And then we'll go to fundraising so we can actually make some money to spend. We don't make much, but it makes enough. Now these options here are important as well, which are the delegate and automate options. If I choose to delegate, it means that the, CP the AI will automatically decide for us what the best option is. I don't like that idea. Automating makes more sense. It means that if I don't use all of my hours, it will automatically use them for what I want them to do. So let's say I automate my campaign events and I want to spend the majority of my time like this. Okay, that's fine. Now, if next turn, if I choose to skip the turn, it will automatically do those, those hours for me. Marketing is obviously marketing, different opportunities. Internet ads raises our name recognition, which we already have 100% because we were a politician's child. If we go to opponents, these are the people we're running against. Now, we need to worry about these two at the moment because these are our competition for the primary. Uh, we have closed primaries, which means we only worrying about we're only worrying about the Democrats in this particular election. When we get to the actual election, that's when it will matter. So we're going to go ahead and do the first next turn of the entire game. Now that we've next turned, the important thing to do is to look at our options. What do we have to choose from? So what I want to show is very much it's a very repetitive cycle of running for office in a lot of ways. But there are things you can do to spice it up, and I will show you those towards the end. We're going to continue, and I'll show you next turn. We get messages saying that we fundraised for 20 hours, and we door knocked for 20 hours, which, yeah. Uh, Events-wise, we can hold a rally, and we're going to do that in a moment. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is go to our... Uh, I forget where it is. I want to say it's in... Uh, contacts, there we go. We're going to contact everybody, because those are people that will like us and not like us, and will attend all available events, raising people's notoriety of us, which allows us to make more money fundraising from those individuals. So, these different things do different things. Door knocking, obviously, is door knocking. Interviews are things that are very important because they reach a very wide audience at a time. Speeches are very specific to a specific group. So like if the National Education Committee wants us to give a speech, we can, and that will affect those who like that education policy. Uh, rallies are ways to boost voter turnout, and so what I will do is go to Automate, and we're going to actually add in about 20% rallies, because I think that they're important. Uh, they raise voter turnout, which helps us win the election. Fundraising, obviously, is how you make money. So if I hit next turn, you can see everything happened. We've turned up voter turnout by 9 Okay, nine, nine people is better than nothing. And basically from here, it's just going next turn, and we just keep doing next turn until we reach really the primary stage, in which case I'll change up the strategy just a little bit. All right, we are one week away from the, the um, gen uh, primary election. We have 13 grand. Let's conduct a poll to see, it's a very inaccurate poll, with 6% margin of error, but I want to see what people are voting like if we have a chance. At the moment, we are in the lead by quite a bit amongst Democrats, and so I think that we have the best chance. So let's go ahead and um, run into the next turn. I don't think there's anything else we really should do. Voter turnout's already up 136, and we have a lot of support. There's nothing else we can really do. Let's go ahead and run for the general election. And you can see the results pouring in on both sides to see who's going to be Democrat and Republican for the different positions. As you can see, we did not quite get it. We were about, what, 12 votes short? And, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. You just don't win the primary election. We tried, and we move on from here. Like he says, don't get discouraged. And so because of this, we can now look at that we don't have a job. And the only thing available is president. We're not old enough, and I don't want us to run for president only because I don't feel that's a very good way to go from here. Uh, so that will do it for this video. We tried to run for city um, for a school board position, and we didn't quite get it. And you know what? We learned a lot in the process. Before I end this video, I'm going to go ahead and pick protégés. These are individuals who will run for these positions for us. And so 
I'm going to have one run for school board. I'm going to have another one run for a city council spot, and I'll pick the third to run for the state house in a contested district. Okay, and yeah, that'll basically do it for this video. Uh, one more quick mention, just because I want to mention this. The beta version that I've been talking about has come out. Uh, I don't want to do this particular series in that beta because of the potential for there to be bugs. It would corrupt the save file, and if it does, I can't get it back to where we are now. So just keep that in mind. I will make videos on the beta, but it will not be this series. That will be another uh, separate video series on the beta exclusively. Uh, but that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.